Thank you.
My name is Brendan McGuire. I'm the chair, and today we'll consider appointments of agency boards and commission. We're going to take a quick roll call, um, and before we do, we have um, a new MLA, and this is her first uh, committee meeting, so I just want to say uh, welcome, Kendra. Is it Kendra Coombs? Is that how you say your last name, Kendra? That's correct. Yes. Congratulations on your win, and uh, welcome to the circus. Thank you very much. We, uh, <laughs> we're going to do a, a roll call. We'll start with the um, NDP party. Uh, do you want us to just say our names and yes, yes, just like we would your name and uh, so like Claudia Chender, Dartmouth <laughs> South. <laughs> South. Claudia Chender <laughs> here, Dartmouth South. Good morning. Kendra Coombs, Cape Breton Center. Larry Harrison, Colchester, Muscadabit Valley. Brad Johns, MLA for Sackville Beaver Bank. Suzanne Lonis Croft, MLA Lunenburg, and Vice Chair. Bill Horn, Waverly Fall River Beaver Bank. Rafa DiCostanzo, MLA Clayton Park West. 
and we'll get the staff, including the uh, caucus staff, to also introduce themselves. And we'll start with the uh, legislative staff. Gordon Hebb, Councils of the Committee. Nicole Arsenault, Clerk of the Committees. And Judy Kavanaugh, Committee Clerk. And we'll get the uh, start with the NDP caucus. Joanne Hussey, Deputy uh -huh. Chief of Staff, Nova Scotia NDP caucus. Peter Harrison, PC caucus researcher. Uh, Ray Jewell, Operations Liberal Caucus. Thank you, everybody, and I hope you're getting through these uh, different, different and difficult times. So we're going to start with a reminder to keep your phone on mute. Um, I'll uh, call on you to speak uh, just so that uh, we can have better sound quality for the broadcast and for Hanser. Um, if you want to speak, uh, you can unmute your phone and just identify yourself and just uh, put your phone back on mute and we'll keep a running tally of it and we'll make sure that you get to speak. Uh, you just have to be recognized by the chair before you speak, just like we normally would do. Um, if you leave the meeting and rejoin it, um, that will disrupt this, uh, the audio. So try to stay on for the whole entire meeting if you can. And with that, we'll jump into committee business. Mr. Chair. Yeah, who is this? You got to identify. Uh, Brad Johns. Yeah. Prior to uh, starting to be committee business, can I have a uh, an added item to the agenda? Uh, Judy. Well, after this, uh, at, at the end of the committee business, you'll be asking the committee if there's any other committee right. business, so he, he can bring something up then. All right, right, perfect. I do. I do have a motion at that time. So thank you. Okay. We just. I just want to remind everybody, all parties, uh, that motions and uh, topics have to pertain specifically to the Human Resource Committee. Um, I know that we're all anxious for the other committees to be up and running, but if it's an issue for another committee, it will be deferred to that committee. Um, and with that, we'll go. We'll jump right into committee business. We have. A list of appointees who wants to start off I'll start first Suzanne uh, Suzanne can you just identify your full name and where you're, where you're from uh, Suzanne Lonis Croft MLA Lunaberg um, for the Department of Agriculture Nova Scotia Crop and Livestock Insurance Commission Rachel Chevry vice chair and member okay uh, is there uh, any comments all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Next. Um, for the Nova Scotia Farm Loan Board, Danny Finney, Chairman and Director, Stephen Brown, Director. Is there any comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Next. Uh, Bill Horn. Yep. Department yep. of the Communities, Culture, and Heritage. A motion for the Art Gallery in the Nova Scotia Board of Governors. Uh, David Gorman as a governor. Patricia Donnelly, governor. Shante Grant, governor. I move that motion. Is there any uh, comments? Mr. Chair, Brad Johns. Yes. Um, I noted that there are 11 vacancies uh, currently on that board, and we've had five applicants. We're only uh, assigning three. I'm curious what, uh, why the other two weren't considered, given that there's 11 vacancies. And particularly around, I know that the, uh, the Art Gallery in Nova Scotia is uh, looking at a new major project with that new building and stuff. I would think that uh, to have 11 vacancies on that board while they're doing uh, that project, you would think that you'd want to have a full board there. So I'm curious why the other two weren't considered. What other two? Uh, well, there were five applicants that came in. We are only approving three of them today. So we uh, we can have uh, staff look into that, but uh, I don't have that answer offhand. So um, we, we can definitely look into that. 
Okay, and uh, if we could also, while we're looking into that, if we could also find out when they anticipate having uh, the other vacancies filled, and once again, given the given the uh, expansion that the art gallery is going under at the current time and over the next couple of years, I would think that it would be a priority to have that word filled. Certainly. Okay. Uh, any other comments? Okay. Can I just ask on the clerk, yeah. uh, is the committee directing me to write a letter to the Minister of Communities, Culture and Heritage asking these questions? Uh, I, do you need a motion to do that, Judy? Uh, I, it doesn't have to be a formal vote. I suppose if the committee agrees by consensus. Chair, Mr. Yeah, Chair, we, we can uh, we can have uh, we can look into it and see when those seats are expected to be filled. Okay, Sorry. thank you. Okay, um, the uh, so we'll we'll put that forward. We'll have uh, a letter. Sorry, Claudia Chender here. Uh, Sorry, Claudia, go ahead. So just. For clarity, uh, Mr. Chair, are you directing the clerk to write a letter to the minister asking when those vacancies will be filled? When you say look into it, is that what that means? Yeah, certainly. Okay. Yeah, we'll send, Thanks. We'll send a letter off and with ask for a time frame on when those positions are, are expected to be filled. Is that is that okay? Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Okay. Um, back to uh, the nominees uh, or the appointees, sorry. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, it's carried. Okay, next, please. Halifax Regional Library Board, Bill Horn. I move that Emily Miller be a member and Heather Rose a member. Any comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Um, next, please. Bill Horn again, uh, Sherbrooke Restoration Commission, Eric Black as a member, Keith Gallant as a member, and Margaret Harpel as a member. Any comments? Uh, Brad Johns again, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you to the clerk, I'm just curious uh, how many vacancies are currently on that board? The clerk? I'm afraid I don't know that. Um, okay, would, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is carried. Uh, next, please. Yes, Bill Horn again, Department of Education and Early Childhood Development. I move that a board of directors of the Atlantic Provinces Special Education Authority be Ann Barrett, member. That's it. Uh, all the, any comment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion is carried. Next, please. Uh, this is Rafford Costanza, MLA for Clayton Park West, and it's the Department of Finance and Treasury Board. Uh, the first one is the Nova Scotia Liquor Corporation. Uh, we have Keith Dexter as director and vice chair, Kathy O'Toole as director. Any comments? Mr. Chair, Brad Johns. Um, so I'm curious in regards to this one, I know that this one uh, does have an honorarium of $1,000 a year for members, and I think it's $10,000 for the chair a year. Um, I believe there were 35 applicants that, that applied for this. I'm curious to know why we're just reappointing uh, two people and we're not looking at uh, bringing on some new members to that board. Uh, once again, we can uh, we can send an uh, email or a letter out asking when we expect the other uh, spots to be filled. Yeah, and I'd also like to know what the criteria is for uh, for people to be on that one. I know that this is the... It's the highest paid of all the uh, committees of the province and uh, at $1,000 a day. So I know that it's one that people are very bad. interested in getting into. So um, I would like to know what, what the uh, requirements are and why two would just be reappointed. 
So to correct, it's not a thousand dollars a day. I know that was a slip of the tongue, but uh, just to correct that for answer. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, thousand dollars a year, ten thousand dollars a year for the chair. Um, we can check to see. I'm sure there is. Um, we could have the clerks look into that one. I'm sure there is uh, something online or something that we could find uh, with regards to criteria. Uh, and if the community is okay, we can do what we did with the last one and send a letter off to the proper department to ask when we uh, when they're expecting the board to be filled. Is that okay with everyone? Any other comments? Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. Next, please. Rafa Di Costanzo again, Department of Health and Wellness. We have the board of, uh, of IWK Health Center, Cheryl Stewart Walsh as director. Any comment? Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Brad, Brad Johns again, my apologies. Um, so I've also noted with this one that the Nova Scotia Health uh, Authority is supposed to have an appointment on that too. I didn't see that that was filled. Can we get a confirmation as to whether or not uh, an SHA has an appointment on that board and whether or not it's filled? Yeah, we can. We'll have the clerk look into that. Thank you. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next. Rafford. Uh, Di Costanza again, Board of Nova Scotia Health Authority. We have four, uh, Stephanie Augustine as director, Dr. Cynthia Ford as director, Susan Spence as director, and Mark Charette as director. Comments? Uh, Mr. Chair, Brad Johns. So my comment would be is I am glad to see that this one has come forward. Uh, I think this is the first round of appointments uh, since the new NSHA was formed in 2015. So uh, I am glad to see that they're finally coming forward. But similar to uh, the IWK board, I've noted that on this one, uh, NSHA is supposed to have a member on it from IWK, and I didn't see that. So similar to the last appointment we did, I'm wondering if we can confirm whether or not the IWK is supposed to have somebody on NSHA, and if so, why would, there's nobody appointed there now? Uh, we can see if there is uh, anyone appointed to uh, from NSHA appointed to the board. Um, we'll have the clerks look into that. Um, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Against? Next, please. Or sorry, the appointment. Okay, the next one is the Department of Labor and Advanced Education, Research Nova Scotia. We have two names, Eva Zappale as director and Janine Lagasse as director. Any comment? Yeah. Mr. Johns, no comment? No, I'll leave this one alone. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> uh, okay, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. What's next? That's it, I think. These are all the names that we have on record. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair? One second, please. Uh, so does that, uh, that end the appointments uh, for the ABCs? There's no more? Am I correct? That's correct. Yes, that's correct. This is the clerk. Can you just give They've me one second for people? Before we move forward, just give me one second. Sorry about that. This is the new normal. I had to, my daughter was crying. I had to check in on her, see if she was okay. Um, it's probably a first for committee. Um, so is there other committee businesses? We'll ask each caucus first. So we'll start with the NDP. Do you Mr. have any Mr. other Chair? committee business? Sorry, Mr. Chair, this is the clerk. Yeah. Uh, there, yeah. there is one piece that the, that the committee needs to go over. Uh, I okay. sent out a piece of correspondence from the Minister of Environment. Okay in response to a request for information made at the January 28th meeting. Okay, so, so we have that. Does everybody have that in front of them? Yes. yes. Um, 
Is there any discussion on it? Mr. Chair. Mr. Johns. Thank you. I would note that that correspondence was dated on March the 11th. Uh, we're now here in May, and uh, so I'm wondering whether or not we can get a uh, an update on it. It's uh, four months, three months old now. So is there an opportunity to get an update on on the correspondence? It's Claudia Chender. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I would... Yeah, I I I I echo that. And um, this was this was our request around um, a timeline for the sustainable um, development, the roundtable on environment and sustainable prosperity, which is reconstituted under the new Sustainable Development Act, formerly under EGSPA. Um, and so the commissions had are had already lapsed. Um, so a great deal of time had already elapsed before those appointments had come forward to us at the time of this letter, which was in January. We're now at the end of May. So um, I would like to ask that we write a letter asking for an update. Uh, would on you like to put a motion on the floor? That seems perfectly reasonable. Sure. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, reply to the minister um, asking for an update on um, the reconstitution of the new um, of the roundtable on environment and sustainable prosperity. All those in favor? Mr. Aye. Chair. Aye. Oh, uh, Mr. Johns. Yep. Uh, yes. So, it, in uh, for discussion in regards to the motion, uh, which I do support, uh, Ms. Chender did say uh, in regards to having an updated timeline. So that that would be included in the motion as well, is it or? Is, that's the yep. intent of the motion is to have a timeline well we'll have what we'll do is we'll ask for an update uh on on the previous letter that was sent uh like you said both of you have um, put your concerns forward that we're now uh three or four months and we just need the the updated information so any information they can provide us uh we will uh we will ask for so, Mr. Chair, I'm sorry, through you to Ms. Chender, I'm just looking for a clarification in regards to her motion. Is the intent to have a timeline attached, like a more concrete timeline? Is that the intent, Ms. Chender? Yes. So I think an update regarding the timeline for those appointments to um, the roundtable to come forward to our committee is the request. Okay, so my understanding is we're asking for an update on the letter, and a while we would like to see a concrete update, we'll ask for the best possible uh, information with regards to a timeline. Uh, we know that things change. Uh, obviously, uh, things can change rapidly, so we will ask for them to provide us with the best possible information and update that they can. Does that sound Mr. fair? Yeah, Mr. Chair, it's Claudia. Um, yeah. I... Uh, you know, the response that the minister provided um, indicated that they, in fact, had applications for that roundtable that they were in the process of considering. Um, obviously, it's been a very busy last six months um, and nowhere more so than in the Department of Environment. So obviously, we acknowledge that. Um, but given that we know that those are already under consideration, um, I think we can we can ask the question, when will those come to our committee? And if they're not prepared to answer that question, they'll give us a different answer. But my motion yeah. would ask that we ask that question directly. Right. Uh, yeah, I was just trying to take into account that there may be personal things going on with some of those uh, nominees. Uh, but you're right. Uh, we'll send that forward, uh, as stated by the member for Dartmouth South. North, South, South. Um, sorry, Claudia, I always forget. Um, and let's, the motion's on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, it's so that, uh, Ms. Gender, if I understand, that was your, or the NDP caucus's, um, business? No, Mr. Chair, we have another motion that we'd like to bring. Uh, Mr. Okay. Chair. Yeah. I'm sorry. I uh, I did ask early on during the uh, during the setting of agenda that I could make a motion prior to you opening the floor. No, uh, we yes, and we we did say that there will be um, time made available at the end. 
Right now, we're going to go to the NDP caucus, then we'll go to the Conservatives, and then we'll go to the Liberal, as we did with the introduction. So we'll start with Ms. Chender. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I'll put forward my motion, and then I'll speak to it a bit, and we can email it directly to the clerk so that she has the text. So um, I move that the committee write a letter to the Minister of Labor Advanced Education, calling on him to require all workplaces to include accommodations for employees with dependents in their plans for reopening. With schools closed, summer camps uncertain, and respite services limited, we know that many employees will face barriers to returning to work. Government has a role to play in requiring businesses to make flexible work hours and other accommodations so that workers with dependents, women in particular, are not further disproportionately impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. So that's the text of our motion. Um, Given your comments at the beginning, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll situate that by saying that, that this committee um, is constituted to consider issues related to early childhood development, labor, and education in Nova Scotia, um, as well as, you know, considering the ABCs, which we did. This comes under the rules of the House of Assembly, 60 sub 2 sub C. Um, as you noted, uh, Mr. Chair, we haven't had the chance to meet or consider issues for some time, but we are here constituted as a committee. This is the first time legislative business has been conducted in over 10 weeks. Um, and it feels important to ask this committee to consider a motion which is directly in its terms of reference. Um, it's at the heart of early childhood development, education, and labor. Um, the fact is that we have thousands of children, differently abled, elderly, and immunocompromised people whose caregivers cannot return to business as usual, regardless of the reopening plans. Um, we're hearing about consultations being conducted and plans being presented, and we'd like this committee to request that accommodations for these workers be included in these reopening plans. Um, and otherwise, uh, based on the best evidence we have now, uh, we know that we will lose many hundreds, if not thousands of people from the workforce, and most of those people will be women. Uh, so thank you for considering this motion. Okay, uh, agree. It's a, that's a great motion, um, but and we'll open this up for discussion. Um, any comments? Mr. Chair, Suzanne. Yeah, uh, yeah. Identify your, yourself and where you're from, Suzanne, please. Suzanne Lonis Croft, uh, Lunenburg. Um, Ms. Gender, you said you were sending that to the clerk. Can she forward that to all of us to read? It was um, a lot to absorb <laughs> visually. Uh, uh, are you able to circulate what, that? that? Yes, I, I have it now. I'll send it to the members and researchers right now. Thank you very <laughs> much. And then can we have a, a few minutes just to look it over? Please. Certainly can. I was going to ask the same thing. Oh, coffee. Oh, sorry. Not on mute. Sorry. So uh, not on okay. mute. <laughs> Morning coffee. Uh, so, uh, Ms. Chandra, did you send that off? Or did the clerk, clerk, Judy, did you send that off? I've received it and I've just sent it to the members. Okay, can we, are we, are we comfortable with, uh, we'll say, till 10.30, a five minute break to allow the members to digest it? So, just to, be, just, just to be clear, we stay on the line, is that right? Yeah, 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 just everybody mute their phones. Uh, all members uh, read that over, and then we'll come back at 10.30, and we'll vote on it. Okay. We'll have comments. Okay. Is everybody comfortable with that? Yes. See you in five.
Hello, Joanne. I have 1030 on my phone, but on my yeah, microwave, it's 1028. So I'm going to go by my phone. Um, is everybody here? Yes. Can we just do yes. a roll call? Can we do a roll call really quick, please? Start with the NDP. Do you want to Claudia Chender? Yes. Chender Combs. Larry Harrison. Brad Johns. Suzanne Lonis Croft. Bill Horn. Rafa de Costanza. Okie dokie. Uh, uh, Ms. Chender, do you, did you want to read the motion again? Uh, and then we'll have the vote. Sure. I move that the committee write a letter to the Minister of Labor and Advanced Education calling on him to require all workplaces to include accommodations for employees with dependents in their plans for reopening. With schools closed, summer camps uncertain, and respite services limited, we know that many employees will face barriers to returning to work. Government has a role to play in requiring businesses to make flexible work hours and other accommodations so that workers with dependents, women in particular, are not further disproportionately impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Okie dokie. Uh, Mr. Chair. Any comments? Uh, yeah. Suzanne lonis Cross. Mr. Chair, um, our caucus is um, interested in having this letter sent to the minister, and um, we look forward to hearing a reply. Okay. Uh, any other comments? Mr. Chair, Brad Johns, my, my only concern in regards to the motion is um, whether or not it may have a negative result in having businesses who are on the fence deciding not to reopen because they cannot make accommodations uh, for, for employees with children. So I certainly... Uh, support and understand the need to be able to uh, accommodate people with children. Um, no one, I think I, I fit there pretty good. Um, however, I am concerned in regards to putting too many uh, limits on businesses that they may choose just not to reopen because they can't make the accommodations. So I'm curious to know uh, how Ms. Chender sees in regards to that. Ms. Chender, did you want to respond? Yeah, I mean, I guess I would say that the spirit of this motion is that all sectors of business are now being asked to put forward plans about how to reopen in the context of COVID-19. And our position is that one important piece of the context of COVID-19 is that many, many hundreds and thousands of Nova Scotians are acting as uh, either uh, excited or reluctant caregivers in this time. Um, and that means that they will be unable to return to business as usual. And so just as a business has to put forward a plan for having PPE, a plan for social distancing, presumably, we would also like a plan for how to accommodate workers um, who have dependents. Uh, the reality is that they will have to do that. And if they don't, uh, we will see a much worse um, economic situation than we are currently in because we will lose that many more workers. Um, and so in this case, um, we feel comfortable putting forward this motion. Uh, so, Mr. Chair, Brad Johns, just another follow-up. So, I'm assuming that this would only be uh, while the state of emergency is still on, or is this continues on past that? Ms. Chender? I think the text of our motion is clear. We're talking about the plans for businesses reopening. So, when they make their plans for reopening, just as they have to, I don't know what the timeline for the other uh, items that they need to put forward in those plans are in terms of social distancing. I think that will rely on the orders of public health um, and whatever timeline is required for the other plans being presented that public health and the Department of Labor will have some hand in evaluating. Uh, we want this to be a part of that plan. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, we'll support this. Okay, uh, motion is on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion is carried. Now, on to the PC caucus. Uh, do you have any committee business? 
Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair, Brad. John, uh, Mr. Chair, just for the record, I'm, I'm not 100% what the protocol is, uh, but I, I would like to uh, have the record reflect that. I do object to the fact of the chair uh, allowing the NDP caucus go before the PC caucus. The PC caucus currently is the official opposition caucus, and thereby I think uh, we should have the opportunity to have the floor first. I don't know what the protocol is there, but I do want that uh, the record to reflect that. Um, Mr. Chair, I, I think that although uh, today I'm, I'm glad that we've had this meeting today, I think this is great. It does show that uh, that committees can can do business, as I said to the clerk in in my email. I know that the Halifax Regional Council has been holding council meetings, and uh, in my constituency, I've been having meetings with people, uh, constituents via Zoom and other avenues, Skype. Our caucus is having our regular caucus meeting uh, via Zoom, so I do uh, appreciate that we're having the meeting here today. It can actually happen. So uh, I do, however, think that it would be uh, more beneficial if we actually uh, could see everybody's faces and, and talk back and forth a little bit more. And I know initially our caucus, when we started our uh, weekly caucus meetings, it was via conference call. Um, we sent, uh, moved on to Zoom and we're finding that much more productive. And uh, so I'm, I'm thinking that there might be an opportunity the next time we meet, uh, if we can't meet in person, to uh, look at, at uh, perhaps using some of the newer technologies that are available. So, Mr. Chair, I'd like to put the following motion on the floor that I'd move that the chair of the Human Resources Committee, together with the committee clerk, make arrangements for our June meeting of 2020 of this committee to be held using a technology such as Zoom. So I will let me comment on a few of those things. I don't think there is any protocol. Um, I will check into that. I, uh, as long as I've been chair, I've always started the same way. Um, and also, we've also always given all parties an opportunity to speak their mind and to put forward motions. Uh, the motion that you just put forward, quite frankly, has little to nothing to do with the motion that was put forward by the NDP. So there's not a conflict there. Um, you know, uh, this is the first time I've ever had anyone uh, come forward and say, well, I want to go first. Uh, I can understand why everybody wants to be the first out of the gate. Um, but, uh, you know, we can look into it. But I, I just, I think in the spirit of cooperation, um, you know, this, this, this committee ran pretty smooth today. Secondly, the reason why we decided to go with teleconferencing is not everybody has the newest technology. Um, not everybody has um, uh, internet, an internet connection that, um, you know, even myself down in Hearing Cove, where I'm at, uh, sometimes my internet connection is in and out, uh, sometimes I have issues. The, this, for us, has been the most reliable way because aside from that one time in the summer when we lost our cell phones, uh, our cell phones is, a, is probably the most reliable, or your home phone is the most reliable source for internet. Um, you know, I, we could be sitting here doing a Zoom conference call and my internet could go out, which happens quite frequently, um, or my router could go down and then uh, the, it kind of throws everything out of whack. So what we're trying to do, what I was trying to do, is find the best possible way for everybody to be able to join, no matter where they're at in Nova Scotia, and, at the, and that includes media and staff, and at the same time, uh, make sure that it's reliable so that, you know, Mr. Johns, you're out in Sackville. Yes, you have a reliable internet, but anything could happen and you could lose your internet, and then you're out of it. Uh, you're out of the conference meeting. So that was kind of the reasoning and the rationale behind it. I wanted to make sure, you know, if. You know, somebody, we could have a staffer that uh, is in Meet Cove. We don't know. Like, we just wanted to make sure we could have a, a media uh, that wants to join on these calls that could be somewhere else or a staff member or, like I said, an MLA. So, for me, this was about reliability. It wasn't about seeing somebody's face, quite frankly. You know, uh, it, I, I, don't, I don't really think it makes a big difference. I've done Zoom. I've also had Zoom kick out on me a few times. 
I don't think it makes a big difference. This is all being recorded. Um, it's being streamed on YouTube right now. Uh, so for those of you that uh, want to go back and review, you can go back and listen to this. Um, so, you know, we can look into it, but there's no, my, my issue around that is there's no guarantee on reliability. And what we want to do is we want to have reliability and make sure this goes smooth. Mr. Chair? Yeah, Mr. Johns, go ahead. Thank you, Brad, John. So uh, I guess there's two things there. In regards to uh, protocol, uh, I recognize uh, your comment, and, and maybe it, it wasn't an issue until now that we're on a, uh, on a conference call that uh, I see it as an issue. So I would like a clarification in regards to that. I know that as a legislative committee of the House, we follow the same rules as the House, and so I'm curious to see uh, what the protocol speaking order is. I, I let my uh, objection continue to stand for the record in regards to that. Um, in regards to uh, how we do our meetings and my motion, um, I do appreciate your uh, your background on that, but I, I don't think it's our job to uh, as an MLA to decide uh, if and how we do it. It's to give direction to staff and staff to uh, devise the best way to to have the meeting. So it may be uh, some people call in via Zoom and some people call in uh, with a teleconference line if they needed to. I know when we use Zoom on our caucus and, and we have people all across the province on our caucus, um, in some cases uh, they, they mute their video and uh, they're able to hear perfectly. We've had no issues whatsoever. And uh, we have people calling in uh, all the way Cape Breton and uh, all the way down by Digby. So I think uh, we can certainly do that here as a committee as well. So I ju that's just, uh, I leave my motion stand and anybody else wants to comment on it. So I will, I will further comment on that because you had referenced me. Uh, my job as chair is to instruct staff on how to set up these committees and, it, uh, and what we're doing moving forward. Um, the issue that we have, once again, is around internet reliability um, with some of these um, issues. And that doesn't mean, you know, like I said, I go back to, I'm here in Hearing Cove, um, and I do at times have choppy internet, and I'm 15 minutes out of HRM, and I've tried all of the big providers. Um, the issue that I have around your motion is that it could potentially exclude staff and or MLAs. I could, you know, the it's great to see people's faces, but it's more important to make sure that people that have access to this uh, have access to it. So uh, we'll put this up for a vote, but I can tell you as the chair of this committee, uh, at times this may actually exclude me. And I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's fair that it may exclude me. So we'll put this motion on the floor for a vote um, we can give uh, uh, staff five minutes, or we can give people five minutes if they want to, but we'll put it on the floor for a vote. So um, let's. It's let's, Claudia. Can I yeah. speak to the motion? Yeah. Um, so I um, I want to uh, support investigating this option. Uh, I hear your concerns, Brendan, but you know the reality is is that Halifax Regional Council which represents all parts of the HRM, um, has been doing this. People can call via audio um, if they can't join via video. Um, and, you know, I think that if we look across the country at all orders of government, almost everyone is doing this except for the provincial government in Nova Scotia. So our federal government is doing it with many more remotely situated MPs than we have here in Nova Scotia. Our municipal orders of government are doing it. Uh, provinces across the country, like Ontario and Alberta, that have much more disparate landscapes, are doing it. Um, and so I think it makes sense to explore this. I think it's no secret that we have been advocating for a long time for the rest of the committees to open up. My fear is that this notion that we can't um, meet in this way is being used as some kind of Trojan horse for why we can't 
um, have those committees at all. Um, so we saw in public accounts that the unanimous decision that there wasn't unanimous decision to meet virtually. Maybe this was an excuse. I don't know what it is, but I would like it actually a definitive opinion um, from Ledge TV and from staff on whether or not it is feasible, in fact, for us to meet virtually in that way. Um, we know that Kendra was sworn in uh, via video. She's in Cape Breton. Um, obviously, she's in an urban part of Cape Breton. Um, and so, you know, I think it's an open question. I mean, quite frankly, if if we don't have good enough internet across the province for our MLAs to meet virtually, then we need to fix the internet. Um, but in the meantime, you know, I would like an opinion or at least to look into the option um, of meeting that way. Okay. And it's, so uh, we're going to put it to a vote. What I will say again is um, this varies from place to place. I uh, used HRM as an example for uh, city council. I just remind everyone that there's not a single person from my community uh, that uh, Mr. My counselor um, does not live in this community as of right now. Um, so there's actually nobody from my community that is uh, attending that. So um, I go back to there's a whole host of issues. No one's saying that we can't do other things. Uh, obviously, today it's, it's become clear that this method does work. Um, we've been able to have a productive meeting and appoint ma many people to boards. And with that, I'm going to throw the motion out on the floor for a vote. Um, so all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All those opposed? Nay. No. No. Mr. Chair. Well, we're, hold on one second, Mr. Johns. That's, I think we should um, give a names when we vote. Yes. <clears throat> so um, there, I heard four yeses and four noes. Mr. Chair, one second, Mr. Johns. Uh, to the clerk, um, I've heard four yeses and four, four noes. Okay. Um, why don't we read through the names and have members say yes or no as we go through? Okay, so we'll redo that vote, and we'll start with the NDP caucus. Ms. Chender? Yes. Ms. Coombs, sorry? Yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Mr. Johns? Yes. Mr. Horn? Mr. Horn? He must be muted. Mr. Horn. Can uh, the clerk, what's that? Okay, Ms. Croft. People, unmute your phones and vote. No. Ms. De Costanza. No. Mr. Horn. No. And myself is a no. So we have four no's and four yeses, which is a tied vote. And in a case like that, the chair casts a second and deciding vote. No. Now we have five no's and four yeses. Okay, motion is defeated. Um, we will move on to, let me see here. Our next meeting will be June 30th uh, at 10 a.m. It'll be appointments to agency boards and commissions. Hoping uh, that we can get some of that. Hopefully we'll have some responses to the NDP's motion on uh, child care and then uh, the conservative motions on um, filling the ABCs. Uh, this will be done once again by teleconference. Um, so that everybody has access to the um, to the meeting, uh, and with that, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Johns, Brad, Brad Johns, thank you. So prior to uh, adjournment, so just on clarification for our next meeting, um, I did I noted that uh, when when the uh, when the clerk sent out a request for today's meeting that uh, that uh, it was quoted in that. Uh, that the chair had confirmed there were no essential ABCs, um, given the fact that uh, when we look at what we looked at today, the farm board, art gallery, 
uh, NSHA, IWK, Nova Scotia Health Board, uh, Board, Liquor Commission. There were obviously uh, some substantial uh, appointments today, not no appointments. So I'm just uh, so we will be having that meeting. We won't be getting an email asking us. We will be having that meeting on June the 30th, just for clarification. Uh, to the clerk, do you want to clarify that? Well, um, I suppose it's always the chair's prerogative to pull the members and ask them if they want to cancel the meeting. So um, for now, we would assume the meeting is going to take place. But if the chair chooses to pull members on it uh, in June, then, then that's what happen. So, uh, Mr. Chair, through you to the clerk. So, for clarification, the prerogative to poll is up to, regardless of uh, the date being set today, the prerogative to poll is up to the chair? Correct. All we're saying today is that the next meeting is scheduled for June 30th, but it's it's not a, um, a guarantee that the meeting is going to take place or that it will take place on June 30th. Thank you for right. clarification. So, Mr. Johns, uh, so if there is a change to the date, um, as with this uh, previous, uh, with this meeting, there'll, there'll just be uh, a poll sent out from the clerk. Well, like as I as I said previously, given uh, the May 15th correspondence that there were no essential appointments, and looking at the appointments to what the committees we made today, I would say there were some very significant uh, appointments today. So I hope we have our meeting in June. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I'm glad that we were able to have this meeting when it ran so smoothly. Uh, and with that, uh, we will conclude committee business. I wish you all the best and uh, stay safe and uh, lots of love to you and your family. We are adjourned. We are adjourned, sir. Thank you. Hey, take care. Thank you. Thank you.